Hello everyone and welcome back to my tutorial for Crusader Kings 2. We've got this little duchy here. Now there's a couple other things I wanted to touch on last time um, that I haven't touched on pr as much yet. Uh, basically in this military screen. Now there's an option that you can do with your military screen for your retinues. Is there no? uh, basically, a retinue is a standing army in this game. You spend cash, uh, an initial investment, basically, and then over time, you bring them up to a 500-man unit, spending money until they hit 500, and then you don't have to pay anything. Um, they are best used as a... I guess a hunter unit? Um... You can you can recruit a bunch of these soldiers, right? No, and they they count towards your uh, oh good. They won. They count towards as, as your personal army, right? So in this little realm tree thing, or yeah, they show up as your personal soldiers, and that is helpful for factions. We don't have any factions yet, but um, factions always compare the strength of the people against you, against your own strength. Uh, so I start a small tournament. I must choose the most beautiful lady at the tournament, and she. Uh, my wife, of course, is is who I'm going to back. Nothing happened. So lots of little events pop up. Um, this is another thing you can spot. This this is something especially you want to pay attention to. Diseases, smallpox. So, uh, if you have an army in a territory that has, uh, that has a disease going rampant, you can expect a lots of loss of life. It's, it's terrible. Um, so, what I was talking about those hunter units. Oh, excellent. Uh, yeah. I'm now going to work on improving my... Sure, why not? Well, my martial is close. Um, so when I talk about hunter, you use them to find and destroy the enemy's main armies, then kind of pull them back to sit and wait around, because um, sieging will just cost them, cause them to lose men over time, and that just costs you money. Um, the advantage, though, also the advantage with having mercenaries hired, is that when you go to war, you can expect them to be at full morale. Uh, I'll just show you briefly what I mean. If I call up my vassals, the red bar, they have very low mor they're, they're basically all out of morale. Uh, so if they were to get into a fight, they would be comp they would just break instantly. A full green bar is what you want. <coughs> Another tactic to pay attention to. This seems to be a military episode. Is um, when you defeat an enemy unit. If enough of them survive, they will retreat to one of the nearby territories. Um, same with your soldiers. They will automatically... Oh, excellent. So, I've got a claim here. Now, one thing you always want to do, at least until you hit a certain point of strength, is see what allies they've got. So, he's got an ally of a count. The Count of Powys. So, this guy over here. There's no way he's going to be able to intervene. He has no he has no ships. He'd have to march all the way around. This guy has uh oh he's got a he's got a decent sized army actually. Mine is larger of course. So you have you know different ways you can do it. In this case, I'm going to hire. Uh, ah right, there's a retinue cap based on how big your realm is, and I can't build it, so... Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight him. I think I can take him on. I will gather, of course, all my soldiers. I will, I'm gonna wanna pull them back to one place, because my, uh, my vassals aren't at full strength. <coughs> oh. Another sun. Oh, 
always it always pays to put your best warriors in charge. One thing you want to be cautious about though is putting yourself into battles. While it can be good for training you up, in fact I think I will in this case, um, you can suffer damage, murder, killing, and if you're captured, it will be the end of you. Um, yeah. So there we go. He retreated back there. I'm gonna finish off his forces. Like, here we go. Good little example. I just got myself maimed. I lost a leg or an arm or something. It produces my martial spills, and I... And I, I, I you know, I'm a little less healthy, but that's fine. We're gonna, we're gonna work hard to destroy his forces completely. And of course we will call my dear old the dad into the war. Of course he'll help. And his army comes over to help. Now the one thing you want to be risk is these claims that you get, that where you, where you bribe them up. Um, I'm fair, well, at least it used to be. And I think it's still the case that you will lose that claim. It is, it is just a forged claim that it, it does not survive to be passed on to your kids. Um, but it looks like in the most recent update they fixed that. Okay, got a new son. That's good. My dad named Cripple. I'm still at the war. I must appoint new people to my court. Send my new priest over to go harass the Pope with friendliness. And continue my war. So it used to be the case that uh, fabricating a claim would be lost when your uh, whoever had the claim fabricated for them died. But it looks like they get to keep it now. Which is nice. Another thing that happens... Uh, let's see. I want you to be educated by the most charming person. I want to start f uh, getting some uh, diplomatic guys going. Uh, but I really don't have any, except this one person who's not of my my culture. Alright, well then, I uh, guess I'll take care of his education. <coughs> I'm going to nominate my son, I think. Anyhow, uh, what was I going to say? Right, so it used to be the case that you would lose that claim. It was just a temporary thing, fabricated. But uh, now it looks like it passes on, so that's a, that's a nice change. My brother, oh, my brother inherited? I didn't. Oh, right, because, uh, oh well. I can fix this. Perhaps tanistry was not the wisest course of action to take. I should have went for primogeniture, which is the eldest inheritance. Ah oh, well. So I got my 100%, I offer peace, enforce the demands. Hmm. Three lands. Things are going well. Apparently, I don't like the church. Or do like the church. One of the two. So I've got three kingdoms. Uh, if you ever want to know what you need, you go. You can go to the, click on this little de jure tab. So here's my current thing, right? It's part of the Kingdom of Ireland. To do that, I have to have two duchies, and I have to hold at least half of the whole kingdom. 13 provinces, or counties in this case, sorry. I'm Canadian, leave me alone! Uh, so I will need seven of them. Now then... Uh, pity. So because... Uh, so he's got, a, he's got a claim on some of my lands. That's fine. I'm going to... Right. Um, oh, I think I might have to go to war with my brother. 
which is fine. I think I th see the next territories I want anyways. So if we ever hit to get get this going to 10 years, and we'll definitely switch this to primitive. It makes things easier. I haven't used Tanistry before, honestly. Yeah. Felt it worthwhile to try out. Normally with the pure elective, uh, you can usually, if you're if you're decently popular, you can consistently swing things in your favor. Uh, Tanistry, they specifically don't want it um, from other branches of the family. Which is too bad. Now, I'm going to reveal to you a cunning trick for how to get additional territory. Like, this works. When you're, when you're starting off, taking one piece of land at a time, slowly building your forces up. But eventually you hit a point where you're like, I want to take large swaths of land in one go. It's cheaper. Uh, you can get multiple of these little schemes going at once. So what you do is you find a king. Like so. You go and you look at the claimants. These are all the people who have a claim to the throne of England. Now if you're powerful enough, or important enough, and there's maybe an upset brother or something, they would be willing to come to your court. Once they're in your court, ah, I become a hedonist. What you can do like say, say, uh, so he's got a brother. Uh, where's his brother? Oh. Uh, well, when he dies, all of his kids are going to get claims. So say, take for example this gentleman, the Duke of Cornwall. Were he not already a, a, a duke, he would just have a claim to the throne. He'd probably be married still. What you could do is you could try to convince him to join your land. Come, 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 stay with you. If he agrees. Uh, should I build the church? If he agrees, you can then start a little plot and have his wife murdered. Anyone in your court, they don't get the choice. Oh, sorry, brother. They don't get the choice of whether or not, um, of, of who they marry. So you have, you have a prince. He has a claim to a throne, you find one of the people in your dynasty, you give them a matrilineal marriage in this case, so that whoever so that their children are of your family line, get a son, murder the dad. I know that's a lot of murder. Which means his tight his claim passes on to his son. Then you can press that claim, putting that young boy onto the onto a foreign throne. Now, you only want to do this, of course, if you yourself were a, a higher-ranked title, or else you would just uh, you, you'd become an independent territory. Uh, because you cannot have vassals of equal level than you. So I cannot, I cannot have any vassal dukes in this case. Uh, but if I were, if I were an emperor, I could press a claim for a kingdom, and the entire kingdom would join me. Educated. So in this case, say I wanted to, I could try to uh, orchestrate a claim on this place. See, this guy, we got this guy. He would, he would not come to my court. He has no reason to. But eventually, oh, I got my sister. So here's, I'm gonna, I, I'll, I'll show an example. Uh, let's try connect. No. Right, here's an example. What if I tried to invite him? So, he has a strong claim on the Kingdom of Munster. Right? So, if I were to... Let, let's invite him to court. I might not press this claim, but I want to show you what happens. So he's agreed to come to my court. Excellent! I would like him to have some kids. Kids of my family. 
So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to find his wife. And I'm going to want to have her murdered. This is the auto-invite everyone little plot. A bunch of people agree to join my scheme. And if I really wanted to, I could find others. This means I'd have to give them a little bit of, a little bit of coin. Let's just do that with one person. 20 bucks. Uh, and she's now willing now she's willing to join me. Takes a little bit as they they scheme and plot figuring out what exactly they want to do. I'm going to speed things up by bribing another person. Excellent. So here we got the the bishop. He's going to poison that uh, the the gentleman's wife with at, with some poisoned wine. I approve the plan. Uh, she did not drink wine, but no, but did not figure out what happened. Not all assassination plots work. Just seeing if there's anything. Oh, I'm going to upgrade this castle town. Since it will give me more moolah. Uh, apparently, one of these people, uh, she's a, she let it, let it out that I was plotting to have this man killed. Terrible. But uh, uh, it's mostly just her that cares. If she had a family, uh, they would care. Now we're gonna try to uh, have her fall off a balcony. Oh, apparently I've been... She caught me at it. So this, now that I'm being caught with this, it is going to hurt my reputation with people. Uh, oh, oh, it should be... It'll reduce my reputation with... My vassals. Yes, because I'm dishonorable for trying to have this woman murdered. Uh, but that's fine. I can get by ten points. We'll just keep at it. Uh, so he had my spy master arrested, which is terrible. But I've got plenty more where he came from. England's not a fan of me now. I'd really like this scheme to go off a little more, uh, a little faster. I will have to bribe more people, I suppose. Oh, there we are. Oh, what's this? I've visited a monk from a famous great abbey at Clooney. Blah. He wants me to donate a large sum of gold to the Abbey. And they will pray for me. And I will... Ah, uh, sure, why not? I, I can afford it. Maybe God will favor my, my schemes of murder. Uh, there's an event. That's fine. I'm fine with that. Come on, I want to get this woman murdered and reveal my cunning schemes. Come on, you people. How hard is it to murder one woman? She, of course, hates me because I've had to ha tried to have her murder twice. All right, backup plan. Just try to have her assassinated. I'm going to pull my spy back, or my spy master, he improves the chance that I will have her assassinated without being discovered. Fifty bucks. Nope. 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 Wow, I have the most incompetent assassins there are. 
<sighs> How disappointing. There. So she's dead. Took forever. But this means her dear husband is now single. And there is my sister. He can't refuse. Now they're married. So, look at me. Hopefully they can have some kids. Those kids will have claims. And then I can push those kids onto a foreign throne. It's all very, very cunning. But right now I'm focused on Leinster. And we'll send my spy master back out to get more and more tech. Ah, we'll upgrade my shipbuilding. And legalism and noble customs, the best two to focus on as a king, because it increases the, your reputation with your vassals, which means they're less likely to p work against you. Legalism, there's a penalty whenever you take over, uh, whenever you're a new king. People aren't used to you yet. This takes makes it less before um, the penalty goes away. It takes less time. These events pop up, so we got a. There's a holy order, the Hashashin, uh, showing up in Western Persia. They're not probably. They're probably not going to get involved with us. My son is of age. I will, of course, get him married. To. Oh, well, there we go. A Swedish princess, perhaps. Never know what claims might pop up. No, uh, no work, no success yet for my chancellor. Which is terrible, but it happens. All right, so let's review a few things that we go through, and then I'll I'll call this session to an end. Military tab. You can hire retinues. Uh, they come in groups of five hundred. It all depends on the size of your army. These are useful to have um, to break enemy um, enemy forces. You want to generally you want to you'll want to take a mix, unless you have certain particular groups, such as uh, the Byzantines have a group that's made up of heavy knights and horse archers. Best combination you could ask for. They could just have you just take those. Uh, these guys you'll probably need a mix so they can fight under any conditions. Plots. We tried. We saw me try to do a plot. Sometimes they take a while. Um, you invite you invite brothers or cousins or whatever. Anyone who has a has a claim, kill their spouse because it can work either way. You can you can get women th get claims through women too. Uh, kill their spouse, marry them to someone of your family. In church of the correct uh, marriage types, so you want your daughters to have matrilineal marriages and your sons to have regular marriages. Then their children will have claims you can press on for other people. Uh, sometimes you want to speed things along with a little attempt at assassination. Anyways, um, that's all for tonight, I think. We'll continue to try to uh, unite Ireland next time. Um, I, haven't had, I haven't had to show off... There should be a crusade soon, which will be good to let me show off how the, uh, the boat system works. But uh, I guess that's something to look forward to. See you all next time.